Greetings, friends. Welcome back to Mike Allen from Chicagoland. Still broadcasting from the city of Dallas, Texas. About to embark on a mission to see another museum here in this great city, the Perot Museum of Nature and Sciences. Now, I don't know anything about this museum other than the fact that it's named after Texas billionaire Ross Perot. And I remember Ross Perot in his days of running for president as an independent in 1992 and 1996. So that's pretty much all I know about this uh, museum. So I'm looking forward to heading inside and showing it to uh, everyone here on YouTube. So come and join me and let's get started. Right here at the ticket booth, they have a long necked dinosaur here called the Melawasaurus in the early Cretaceous period between 125 to 112 million years ago. It says that a team from SMU unearthed the skeleton and it was unearthed in Africa. Got these atoms here proton, neutron, and electrons, about the only thing I remember from my science class in fourth grade and fifth grade. So on the second floor, which is the first floor that I'm gonna be visiting, this deals in the life sciences. Black bear, which extends from Alaska all the way down to northern Mexico. Some trilobite fossils from the Cambrian period between 542 and 488 million years ago picture what the trilobite looked like. These are brachiopod fossils, some shelled fossils during the late Ordovician period. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. 461, now 455 million years ago. Some fossils from some early plant life from the Devonian period. Pictures of what it looked like back there. Some carboniferous period plants. Some tree life. A little bit more familiar to us today. So the Field Museum in Chicago has a whole exhibit on the mass extinction periods. This is the Great Dying. Occurred some 250 million years ago in the Permian era. It's the tail end of that part of history and gave way to the Triassic area and the early dinosaurs. Conifer cone from the Jurassic period. Here's what the conifer cone looked like. Plants and animals from our more drier areas of North America, the Mojave rattlesnake, and then a model of the fishhook barrel cactus. There's a Rocky Mountain mountain goat. This is a Nubian ibex, and I hope I'm pronouncing these correctly, but these guys are native to northern Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Its habitat is the desert. A pair of snow owls native to northern Canada, Alaska, and Eurasia. It says here they come as far south as Texas and in the Caribbeans in the winter. So I forgot it's a holiday today, President's Day on the day of the filming. And this place is jam-packed, so I'm gonna try and talk over the crowd as much as I can. This exhibit talks about the hominin species that eventually evolved into human beings that we know today. Information about how big brains equaled small faces. One thing leads to another in evolution. As the ancestors of humans evolved, their brains became larger and more complex. Modern humans' brains are larger compared to our bodies. As heads got bigger, faces got smaller. It's just a few examples of human evolution and how the brain got bigger. So this last one was the Neanderthal skull. 
about 400,000 to 40,000 years ago. They lived simultaneously with modern day human beings. And then before the Neanderthal, there was Homo erectus. 1.89 million to 143,000 years ago. Here's a human brain with the stem. It's like this is the uh, real deal here. Heading up to the third floor now and you get a great view of the uh, city of Dallas from outside these windows. This section of the museum deals more in the earth sciences. Plant fossils on a slab of rock here, dated from the Cretaceous period. Snail fossils also from the Cretaceous period. It says all these fossils were found here in the state of Texas. This is a Colombian mammoth called Ellie May she was found in the month of May in 2014 in nearby Ellis County. And the amazing thing about uh, Ellie May is that she was found practically fully preserved. I think it was because she was buried quickly and scavengers didn't have time to pick at the uh, bones, so to speak. And that was why she was found so preserved, said to have lived between 35 to 40,000 years ago. Waiting in line now to get an idea of what uh, shifting plate tectonics feels like, but while we're waiting, they have these signs here that kind of give you an idea of what it's like to see Earth constantly moving and shifting in different types of uh, ways here. Picture the San Andreas Fault in California. There we go, simulating an earthquake here. Whoa. According to the uh, computer sign there, it said that that was based upon the uh, earthquake that hit Los Angeles in 1994. Inside the mineral exhibit now, and this is Os Rocks Gold, found in Western Australia in 2010. This here is Dragon's Lair Gold, found in Colorado, and this was once encased entirely by quartz, and it took hours of painstaking work to take the quartz off and get to the layer of gold. This here is a thing of beauty, it's called Stibnite, which was found in China in 2002. An absolute thing of beauty, this piece of crystal. This is called Shatakite, which is found in the Democratic Republic of Congo on the African continent. This here is Pyrite, which is also known as Fool's Gold. It's probably the biggest thing of Fool's Gold I've ever seen. And here's a real thing of gold found in California. <laughs> this museum also has some alternative energy options here on display that they showcase, including wind and hydroelectric, solar, ocean tidal, and geothermal. This here is a model of the Faraday Dynamo, developed in 1831 after Michael Faraday created the very first electric generator, which basically paved the way for our modern day way of living. Model of a nuclear fusion reactor. Looks like Project Genesis from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Some information about how nuclear fusion is still is in its infancy, but scientists continue to work on it today. Probably my favorite subject matter is the expanding universe hall here on the fourth floor.
For as long as human curiosity has existed, our collective imagination has tried to unlock the secrets of the greatest mystery of all, the origin of the universe. For thousands of years, creation myths attempted to explain the incomprehensible. How did the universe begin? Over time, a body of scientific evidence began to emerge that advanced our understanding of the cosmos. There is much we still don't know, but in the last hundred years, scientists have provided us with a provable and verifiable history of the universe. We know that everything in the universe is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons, and that all matter, every living thing, past and present, the air we breathe, the planets, stars, and galaxies, everything, was once condensed into a single speck, smaller than an atom. This is a display of our solar system beginning with Mercury and going all the way to Neptune. Over 333,000 Earths could fit inside our Sun, and the diameter is equal to 109 Earths. Crater filled surface of Mercury. 6 million miles away from the sun. Now the atmosphere on Venus is extremely thick and it traps the sun's heat which keeps the surface temperatures at around 880 degrees Fahrenheit. It is very similar in size and mass to the planet Earth though. Sometimes Venus has even been called Earth's twin even though other than size and mass there's really not much more that's uh, left in similarity. This is our planet Earth, 93 million miles away from the sun. Photograph of our moon. This is planet Mars, the most explored planet in our solar system outside of Earth. There's some images of Pathfinder from 1997. One thing I wanted to point out is that one Mars is equal to only 0.53 Earths, so if we're going to ever live on Mars, we're going to have to learn to adapt to Mars gravity because our bodies are built for gravity on Earth, not Mars. Some images of asteroids from the asteroid belt. I don't see the largest one in here, Ceres, but that is the largest of all of the asteroids inside of that belt between Mars and Jupiter. It's Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. There's the big red spot right there. Which is just this massive storm that's been brewing for nobody knows how long. And we'll do the rest of the outer planets here. They have Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So here's a picture of the Carina Nebula located 7,500 light years away. And it's amazing that all of this could one day become a planet, could become another star create another civilization. It's just amazing to think about it. Information here about the speed of light and how it's always at a constant rate of 186,000 miles per second. But Neil deGrasse Tyson once say, thou shalt not add to the speed of light. And here's a visual of what Albert Einstein's theory of relativity looks like, 1915. The bending of space and time what causes gravity, how mass can just bend space and time. And gravity is depending upon how big of a size the object is. Just absolutely amazing how somebody could figure this out. I know it's way beyond my comprehension, but it's just mind boggling to think about. It's a visualization of our moon and the sea of tranquility where Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed in July of 1969. And lastly, we have the Life Then and Now exhibit here on the fourth floor. There's the mammoth that was unearthed in 1965 and put together by museum volunteers in the 1980s. This must have taken several months, maybe even years, to put this thing back together. There's the American bison that once roamed the North American prairie by the millions. Preservation efforts have brought the bison back and kept it from going extinct. This here is the Tylosaurus skeleton. 
underwater creature. Tylosaurus was also from the late Cretaceous period. This long necked skeleton here is the Alamosaurus, found here in North America. And of course, you got the T Rex. And this here is the leg of a T Rex. Here's the Pachrinosaurus, I think it's pronounced from the late Cretaceous period. Pretty much uh, the vast majority of the dinosaur fossils on this floor are from that period. This here talks about how dinosaurs evolved into the modern day birds, including the pelican right here. A better view of the Alamosaurus from up above. Along with the T-Rex here. I thought this was interesting here about the wood stork and how there was just a thousand of them left in the 1970s, but there's now about 16,000 adult wood storks throughout the U.S. There's another bird humanity's been trying to preserve, the peregrine falcon, native to North America. And this one's called the greater prairie chicken, which is another uh, bird that is fighting for its survival. And programs like habitat restoration have uh, helped bring this bird back. So thank you very much for joining me today at the Ross Perot Museum of Nature and Science. Thoroughly enjoy taking my uh, journeys through museums like this, through uh, the life sciences, the earth sciences, space, time, all the things that uh, had fascinated me when I was a kid, but never really took the time to appreciate until I got older and became an adult. So anyways, if you wouldn't mind uh, hitting that like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. There's other ways you can help me out in growing the channel. I'll put links down in the description below. Anyways, this is Mike Allen from Chicagoland signing off from Dallas, Texas. I'll be back next week in the Chicagoland area with another video. But until then, don't you go changing.